We are showing you this now, and as we do, just getting word that the president apparently now has spoken publicly some words about Senator McCain. We are scrambling to turn those words around to get you to them as soon as we have them, should be momentarily. Meanwhile, as we wait for that, though, the president also apparently had a change of heart when it came to that question of lowering the American flag to half-staff at the White House. This morning, it was, refer it was returned excuse me, to full staff. That was in a break of tradition uh, of keeping the flag lowered until burial to honor the passing of other sitting senators. But then this afternoon, as that statement was released, the president ordered the flag returned to half staff. The American flag on Capitol Hill has remained at the half staff position in honor of the man whose willingness to buck his party earned him the nickname Maverick earlier today. I had a chance to speak to Ohio Governor John Kasich. He was a friend of McCain's. Take a look. Governor Kasich, thank you for joining us. Um, the latest now is that the flag at the White House again flying at half staff and the president putting out a statement saying, despite our differences on policy and politics, I respect Senator John McCain's service to our country and in his honor have signed a proclamation to fly the flag at half staff until the day of his internment. Uh, of course, that had not been the case until midway in uh, the middle of this afternoon. What's your reaction to that news? Great. Great. I'm, I'm glad that the White House has decided to, to do that. And uh, the president, uh, you know, I'm pleased to see that he said yeah, we're going to put the flags back down and and that he had kind words for uh, for John McCain. And I think that's really good. That's good. Positive. What, what do you make of the delay? I mean, I think practically any other administration I could think of, it wouldn't have even been an issue. Uh, I don't read people's minds. I can just say that uh, it's good that across this country there is an outpouring from everybody to say that we should honor the life of this of this great man, a, a guy who's you know, stood on principle. He was able to laugh at himself. He was able to reach out to people who uh, he didn't agree with. He was renowned all over the world. Um, I just I think he was an incredible guy. And I'm, I'm so thrilled to see the outpouring. It's more than what I thought it would be. And I knew there'd be an outpouring. But boy, it's it's international and people are celebrating the life of somebody who figured out a way to stand on principle and still be able to befriend people, even those he didn't agree with. You say it's more than you thought it would be. Why do you think that is? Uh, I, you, never can, you can never really always figure out how human beings are going to react. I certainly didn't get, a, you know, didn't get my uh, psychology degree in the mail last week. But I think that people are hungry for a sense of unity. I think they're hungry for some peace in the valley. You know, look, people are always attracted to the extremes on the left or the right. You know, when if you're ever in a car and you're driving down the highway, you know, and the traffic slows down, you think, well, there must be a, tra a traffic accident. Then by the time you get to where the slowdown is, you, it's on the other side of the road, right? I mean, it's like people are always attracted to these things that can have uh, an, an, a sort of a negative energy to them. It's something about human nature. But people don't want to live in those extremes. People want to live where they can have peace and security and unity. Uh, so while we may be attracted to the flash and the dash, uh, you know, sort of like take a walk on the wild side. You might remember that old song by Lou Reed. The fact of the matter is we like to live where we can have peace, where we can get along, where we can when we can really care about one another. And I think this is a moment where the world is catching its breath and saying, thank God for a guy that showed us how to do it. Well, so if John McCain showed the world how to do that, he's not going to be, obviously, unfortunately, a part of the political discourse going forward within your party, within the Republican Party. Give me some names. Who, who, who is there to, to, to provide that example? Now, this is not a time to be thinking about, you know, any of that. This is a time to think about the life of John McCain. And oh, after a while, if people are inspired appropriately, because I think there's going to probably be a, a more of a series of books and and maybe a movie about his life, because it's a compelling life that people would want to see that uh, even though he's died, his life ended well. And he had his head high and was surrounded by his family. And, you know, what comes next? That's for another day. This is a week to reflect and think about what he has meant. And, and it may inspire not just people who are in public life today, but it may get some of these young people to really be inspired. Uh, and we need that. We need people to say that I can make a difference no matter what I'm doing. I can make a difference in the way the world turns. And that would be, I think, the message of John McCain, by the way. He's also a faithful man. I called John soon after he was diagnosed, and I was concerned about him. I said, John, what about you and the big guy? 
uh, he said, Johnny, as he always called me, Johnny, I, I, you don't have to worry about that. I'm, I'm all squared away. And so a man of faith, a man who loved his country, a man who loved his family and loved his friends, and he could, he could get in the ring and battle with the best of them. But at the end, he shook hands and, and, and held his head high. All right, Ohio Governor John Kasich, thank you for taking a few minutes. Steve, thank you. Senator John McCain was a decorated war veteran, as we said, an accomplished political maverick. That was his reputation, certainly, as praise continues to pour in from across the nation and around the world. One man, as we said, until this afternoon and again this evening, had remained muted on this. That was the president, Donald Trump. And, of course, there is a history here. You are probably well aware of it. The two of them first clashing when the Arizona senator criticized the then-presidential candidate Trump for his characterization of Mexican immigrants as rapists and criminals that back in 2015. Trump, who, according to The Washington Post, continually said that McCain was not a friend, then hit back at the senator. He's not a war hero. He's a war hero. He's a war Five hero. and a half years. He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? The background on that, of course, back in the spring of 1968, Donald Trump, son of a wealthy New York State real estate developer, received the first in a series of what would turn out to be five deferments from the war in Vietnam. Meanwhile, at the same time, it was a young Captain McCain who was beaten within an inch of his life while in captivity in Vietnam. The Washington Post also reporting that the president continues to believe privately that McCain was not a war hero. For more, joined by Susan Page, USA Today, a Washington bureau chief, George F. Will, syndicated columnist and MSNBC contributor. Thanks to both of you for being with us. And I mention again, the president had been muted. I said at the top of the broadcast, we're getting word that uh, at this hour, the president, in fact, is hosting some evangelical leaders at the White House. He just told them, according to our reporting, that, quote, uh, our hearts and prayers are going out to the family of Senator John McCain. And we very much appreciate everything Senator McCain has done for our country. So the president apparently telling that just now to evangelical leaders in the White House, putting out that statement this afternoon, uh, offering his, uh, uh, his uh, respect uh, for the late senator. But Susan Page, it is interesting. It was nearly 48 hours after news of John McCain's passing that the president uh, took this new shift in, in tone here. There had been a day, uh, basically a day of advance warning from the McCain family that this was happening. Uh, I think safe to say, I, I can't think of another leader in either party who in in Trump's position right now as president uh, would have had this delay. What do you make of it? I, I think it's uh, I think it's inexplicable. Uh, it does no damage at all to John McCain. It does damage only to President Trump by having uh, having this sort of delay for someone who is, of, of course, an, an American hero and someone who served the nation in the military and in the Senate. I think it's remarkable it took this long to get him to do even the kind of cursory statement that you just read honoring uh, Senator McCain's uh, service. And I wonder if it was the, the uh, almost universal outrage, including by the American Legion this afternoon, that finally persuaded the president that he should take this step and also lower the flags to half staff until the burial on Sunday. And uh, George Will, in that interview with Governor Kasich, he said he was surprised by the level of the outpouring here uh, at John McCain's passing. I, I do wonder, he didn't offer an opinion on this, but I wonder if, uh, if you would, is, is there an instinct there on, on the far, part of some folks who are mourning uh, Senator McCain right now to connect the example of his life, his story? We talk about the contrast there in the Vietnam era to that of the current president. I think that's right. I, I, I think the president's behavior is not admirable, but I disagree with Susan. I think it's entirely explicable. Uh, Mr. Trump is a man of desperate and transparent and obvious insecurities. And for a man like that, he is, after all, a, a weak person's idea of a strong person. Uh, the life of John McCain is a front to back, a reproach to the kind of life that's been led by, by Mr. Trump. So I, I think there's been a tension there, a kind of uh, uh, almost chemical repelling from between the two of them. And it persists, as you would expect with Mr. Trump, into the realm of bad taste. Uh, hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.